one thing that I I definitely will go back to in this World Cup is that it was not just the team's World Cup. It was a World Cup of every Indian common man. India lifts the World Cup after 28 years. The party starts in the dressing room. Hello and welcome back to Kuti Stories with Ash, brought to you by BKT Tires. And as always, the man, the voice of Indian cricket, Harsha Bogle. Thanks once again. But this is not a Kuti story because this is a giant story about something that captured all of India. This is why they call you the voice of Indian cricket. <laughs> I uh, keep forgetting that he's the anchor and I'm the other. No, no, I mean, there's no, there's no anchor and there's no interviewee in this. I think it's, uh, we are one and the same and we are talking about a wonderful story. I don't know where to begin, Harsha. We'll, we left 2007 with a fall, resurrected with a great campaign in the 2007 T20 World Cup. Suddenly, we have a new young Indian team available and still the seniors coming back. Uh, Sachin was yeah. going to come back any which way. He was in great form. He had hit a purple patch. Uh, I how did it start? I wanted to ask you this actually. How much did the tour of South Africa before the World Cup have a role to play in what happened at the World Cup? That is where Tendulkar went, got all those hundreds. I still remember a headline. It said, Endulkar. I still don't know who has given that headline because I think that person gave India three more years of Tendulkar. Because he just fired up. Can you find a headline saying Endulkar for him? And then he went to South Africa, he came back, got what, two, three hundreds, two hundreds in the, in the World Cup. Did that, did you get the feeling in South Africa something was coming together? Look, when I look back at the story right now, both in 2011 and in 2003, there was a common theme there. Uh, a very successful Indian under-19 team producing a few cricketers. And yes. again, yet another very successful Indian under-19 campaign with Virat Kohli at helm, uh, producing some more talented cricketers. Yes. So, what had happened was, Sachin Tendulkar was in this amazing form. When he walked out, he made runs for fun. Sehwag was on his own merry way. We, we all talk about MS Dhoni, the man with the midas touch. Uh, this, could, this is going to turn into Dhoni's men. Uh, of course, it is like part two of Ganguly's men as well. Uh, I think Dhoni, the middle order batsman, the, the enigma, if you can call that, is so tough to replace Harsha. Yes. I think somebody, uh, Dhoni once, he was, he was talking to me about some middle order batting. I, I, I always believed I understood the game. So I used to go to MS to ask, how can I get my batting better? You, you do, you're the best at it and I bat two numbers below you. How can I get better at it? And he said one thing all the time. So there's only one thing that I realized, I could hit the ball out of the park anytime I wanted. But Greg Chappell told me something very interesting. He said, delay that as much as you can. Soak the pressure, absorb all the pressure and put it back on the opposition. But you know, it speaks of a particular mindset. I know I can hit the ball out whenever I want, but I will resist the urge to hit it because I know when the time comes, I can. Which is something very few people can do. That I will preserve my powers to the end, but I have the confidence that my powers will be preserved at that stage as well. I have seen it at close quarters. It's not just easy to put something away in a cupboard. MS Dhoni, Every time that I've seen him in the nets, I, I had this wonderful opportunity to share my dressing room at CSK and also with the Indian team. Every time he walked out in the nets, what do you think he did? Hit he sixes. knew he could tonk it, he never did that. Ah. The man as a batter understood ODI's ebbs and flows to the perfection, to the T if I may say yeah. so. And I, I also think that he was a far superior white ball captain than a red ball captain. Because by the time he became a red ball captain, I think some of the key bowlers were going away. I think he was a master of playing with his resources. And in a 50 over game, even if you can't take 10 wickets, you can control the game to reach the 50 over mark and the innings ends there. Which you cannot do in a test match game. So I just thought he understood, as you said, the ebbs and flows of 50 over cricket beautifully. The moment we used, we used to be watching, you were in the squad then, I, we were watching. The moment the ball stopped, you said, this is now Dhoni, the captain will be to the fore. It, it is Dhoni's gambit. It is now Dhoni's game. The ball is stopping. You know he's, he knows what fields to set, what bowlers to get. And this is now Dhoni controlling the game. When you play chess, I've been hooked on yeah. to playing chess. There's a queen's gambit. Yes. There are several other gambits that people play and different players choose different ones. I think when the ball stopped and spinners were in play and the game was between 260 to 280, it was Dhoni's gambit. So tell me one thing. I look at the 2011 World Cup. And I think 
how similar was it to the 96 Sri Lankan win? And I only say so because Sri Lanka won because their top order gave them overs. In this case, it was Jayasurya and Aravinda, mainly Jayasurya. In 2011, India's top order, because you had now Rana or Yusuf batting at 7, the top order was giving you 12 to 13 overs. Not just 7-8, it was giving you 12 to 13 overs. As a result, you were playing a batter at number 7. And that batter won you a crucial quarter-final game against Australia. So, you, had your, you in, increased your batting depth because someone in the top order bowled. He knew you got some overs from Yusuf Patan and Suresh Raina. I think that was there in his head. However, you know what I think of Dhoni? Dhoni is not a captain, he's a director. Mm. He's actually a very, very good movie director like he's a director for the game. What does a movie director do? He picks characters and he picks the exact cast for that character. Yes. Right? So, I think Dhoni, in his head, he picks a character, he knows where that character fits, who is the person for the character and gives that person the exact situation to go and play his role to the T. And that's what I think he did with Suresh Raina because Suresh was somebody who was an extremely good striker of the ball and he was playing in the IPL like a dream. And he used Mr. IPL, that's what oh. you call him, don't you? And when he was in that sort of a rhythm, he put him in a place, he brought him into the tournament much later and sent him in situations where he had only one mindset, to attack and go after the bowling. He didn't have to do too much else. Yeah, we were in deep trouble against Australia in the quarter-final. We were in trouble against Pakistan when setting a score at Mohali. Suresh went and changed the game. We, we speak about Yuvraj Singh, we speak mm. about Gautam Gambhir, we speak about Sachin's knocks, we speak about uh, the way Virendra Sehwag started off with the boundary every single time. But in haste, we can't forget what Suresh Rana did in that World Cup. How much of Yuvraj's illness were you aware of? Literally none. I don't think… See, I, I, would, I had been with the team from 2009. Uh, right from when Sachin Tendulkar got that first double hundred uh, at Gwalior um, till about 2011, right till the end I was there with the squad. Yui used to cough. He used to cough and he used to cough vehemently. And I used to think, okay, maybe it's the pressure of the game. So, he's coughing it off. And he used to cough in the middle. And literally, nobody had any idea, at least from the junior segment of the team, that he was suffering with, with a serious illness. And when it broke out, I was shocked. Uh, because I didn't expect somebody who had just become the player of the series. In fact, like I would say, Bharat ka icon. That mm. literally was it. Just like BKT, he was the Bharat icon in that, in that tournament. Yeah, and I think Sachin Tendulkar played an unbelievably big role in that Yuvraj Singh's World Cup. I call this the Yuvraj Singh's World Cup because you name it, he was there in that situation, yes. the center. And for you, someone who did every single game from the studio, what was your memory of Yuvraj Singh in this World Cup? What stood out? What stood out to me was that India had, for those conditions, the absolute perfect balance to the side. In that, you could play with 10 players and Raina was your destroyer in between. If you took Raina out of the team and you had 10, you still had 50 overs of bowling and you still had decent batting, which is what you dream of in an ideal T20 side. So, Raina became this very dangerous floater. That balance was provided by UV You mean a joker eight. in the pack? In a sense, yeah. But provided by UV bowling 8 overs, 7, 8 overs, some days 10 overs. And when UV came on to bowl, you know, you remember what Kevin Peterson said about the pie chakra. You said, pie chakra. He said, ah, chale, he'll bowl. We said, ah, okay, UV will give you 3 overs, he'll give you 4 overs, then he gave you 5, then he gave you 6. And you could see matches changing. We're we watching on telly, we have no idea what's happening in the change room. But we are seeing one more over, one more over, and we're saying, okay, this is what it means to the side now. And you got that additional batsman. That's why I keep referring to the similarities with 96 in that they could play Mahanama and Tilak Ratna at 6 and 7. India could play Yuvraj, Dhoni, Raina, 5, 6, 7, other than the top four. And I, I, I thought that made a difference. That when one of the top order gives you those overs, it just changes the balance of the side completely. Look, you know, looking back at that World Cup and Yuvraj Singh's bowling in that World Cup, a lot of people tend to mistake UV for being a part-timer. Yes. Uh, like being a spinner, when I look, go back and look at his action and the way he bowled, the white ball for some reason, Harsha, as a spinner having played for so many years, I can say this, that the white ball feels it's lighter on the hand. Okay. Right? It feels lighter than the red ball. So, somewhere down the line, if you spin the ball heavily, it tends to hasten off the pitch, gives the batsman a little more pace to work with. UV was one of those rare spinners who had a very supple grip on the, on the ball and just rolled it out nicely with a high front arm and a beautifully side-on action. He had that hip working for him and what that did was at that slow pace, 
the batsman didn't know if it was going to spin or come straight on. Mm. And that's why I think Kevin Peterson found it very hard. It just hung in the air ever so slightly and off the track you didn't know whether it was going to deviate a bit. The greatest strength that MS Dhoni had was trusted in certain resources, held on to them for a longer period of time. You spoke about Ganguly's men, yeah, right? Yeah. About how he gave 10 games to Yuvraj Singh. I think in, in MS Dhoni's head, he gave them four years to say, okay, yeah. you've got four years. I know at the end of the fourth year, you'll be my match winner. And that's exactly what happened with many you know, people. As I'm hearing you speak, I'm hearing this was Dhoni's team. This was Yuvraj's World Cup. The entire sentiment around from the outside we are watching, the entire sentiment around is, we know Tendulkar is not going to be around till 2015. So somehow, if he doesn't win this, his cupboard will look a little bare. So can India win it? And that was all the drama going around. I actually wish there was a little less of that because I feared we might distract the rest of the side into thinking this is Tendulkar's World Cup. What helped was that he was scoring runs. Look, I think playing for a purpose or a cause is very powerful. You know it. Yeah. Um, yes, it was the World Cup was for Sachin. The bait and pass from Sachin to Virat at the end of this World yes. Cup. Virat said, it's time for us to carry him on our shoulders. A great statement. One thing that I, I definitely will go back to in this World Cup is that it was not just the team's World Cup. It was a World Cup of every Indian common man. And you felt that? I did. Now, two things can happen when that happens. Because all of India is willing you on, it can either crush you. Saying, what if I lose? Whereas some people would say, wow, what if I win? And I'd be interested in knowing, did the team think, wow, what if we win? I said, I'll, I'll tell you what. It was the start of the social media era. Twitter had just launched itself or probably just mm -hmm. unleashed itself in the world, mm -hmm. on, on the world. And as we were traveling from different airports during this World Cup, this is just a first-hand story. Everybody that you saw had a smile on their face and a belief inside them that India was going to win the World Cup. You almost felt they wished well for the team. You almost felt they were not criticizing you. But today, after 10 years, maybe 12 years down the line, we are playing another World Cup in, in India. And every single one of those players walking out on the field will know that one of these people in the airport is surely a critic. And he talks nasty about me. And that's the power of social media today than what it was in 2011. I go back to that even when I'm making my YouTube videos now, I go back to the fans and tell them, the fan wars are done. We shouldn't have them. Right. I didn't feel them in 2011. All I will say to the, to the toxic fans is, you think you're standing up for your hero, you actually do your hero harm by, uh, by pulling down everybody else in your quest to promote your hero. But back to the 2011 World Cup, I've got a favorite player because I like people who don't attract attention to themselves, who are almost hidden as part of a team, but they're tough from inside. And I know to some extent this was the coming of age of Virat Kohli, but I love Gautam Gambhir playing that role at three because it's not known and you'll know that better than me. He was a very fine player of spin bowling too. But he, was, he had dropped down from his position and he provided that left-hander at three, then you had a left-hander at five, you had a left-hander at seven. That final was as much, as much Gambhir's as it was Dhoni's. Dhoni's. I think Gautam Gambhir is the most misunderstood cricketer in India because there is a perception out there that's hanging. The greatest team man, the greatest individual in terms of taking a fight on and a very nice guy. He's a, he, he is in your face. He might not be very expressive, but he is out there wanting a fight and wanting a battle. He is not only a fantastic player of spin, he was a great reader of the game. And that, not, not just that knock, Harsha. There have been several knocks leading yes. into that particular final where Gautam has been an unsung hero. And that particular knock, we were two down and Virat got out cotton bowl to Tilakaratne Dilshan. From there on, Gautam literally didn't allow the pressure to get to us. Yeah. The kind of shots he played, the running between the wickets, the chances he took. Selfless. I, I would have said if he could have been 120, 130 not out, but selfless. I think he wanted to shun the game out. I've always had massive respect for the man and I think people just give him much yeah. lesser credit than he deserves. You know, to me, one of the other things was India drew Australia in the quarterfinal. Now, you're talking about a team that hasn't lost 99. They lost one game to Pakistan in 99, but 2003 and they made the 2007 the most boring World Cup there's ever been by dominating start to finish. Now, suddenly you're drawn against that team in the quarterfinal. I thought that game, there was, there was pressure about the India-Pakistan game, 
but somehow i was confident about that game in in my mind i was confident about that game but it was the australia game that i thought had all of us excited saying this team can go the distance with if the way we pulled out Australia. pulled out the australia game look i think going into the australia game right like i i hadn't played there was so much noise around me having to play in the team uh, piyush was the other spinner piyush yes. played a couple of games we drew against england in bangalore so much noise but i was comfortably placed inside my own cocoon and the reason was ms was having constant conversations when we were going through the group stages he would talk to me about how i would bowl to pakistan he would talk to me about how i would bowl to australia what was my field inside the power play he would just ask me nothing specific he wouldn't say this is what you need to do but he would just ask me what's your plan where's your field what is this who are you bowling to sort of questions when i would be going through the nets and uh, he said uh, the game got over you were supposed to play west indies at chepok he said you're on i said okay boy okay mas he said not for now for the rest of the tournament you're on we'd probably play australia uh, be ready so i played the game at west indies in my home venue uh, completely at ease I went for the australia game the who's who of indian cricket and everybody who were i mean all the big people were there i sang the national anthem and for the first time i was overawed i i don't i don't easily succumb to pressure i just live for the moment that's what i love about it and i was like what the hell man what what how does it feel like this it feels very different goosebumps and everything was nervy i got into the game and he threw the ball to me with the new ball hadden and shane watson shane watson was a wrecker in chief yeah. and he threw the ball i bowled the first over there was one ball hit back at me i went and the ball was very much in my reach and i could see my hand shake like that and the ball burst through my fingers and went for a yeah. four and ms was like come on ash i am like Shh. what's happening man yeah. why am i breaking down and like i bowled 3 4 overs i almost got brat had in caught i was settling into the rhythm and suddenly 3 4 overs later he came up to me and said this is not yourself take a break come back later i just 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 reflecting on what is going to happen and but you he, but he could pick that because one of the things we talk about is how well do you understand your player no he i i there have been two three occasions where he's already told me that we played for csk against the victoria bush rangers in south africa i bowled the super over and i went away from my strength of bowling attacking balls and got hit to david hussey he came to me and said you should always stick to stick, stick to your strengths so that you can go back to your room and tell that you tried your best and i was standing at short fine leg he looked back at me and he said from here and it went off yeah. so i was just thinking to myself what i what i had missed i had just not i was looking to put the ball in the place when i was bowling my first spell so i said okay all i need to do is just get shane watson out here how am i getting him out so immediately my brain started thinking okay he's looking to hit me here he's going for a slog sweep i'm going to slide an undercut in and he got bold and i immediately felt okay you know what i need to keep the pressure off and think there then how am i getting the batsman out which is my strength looking to dismiss batsman out in the head is what i am good at and i had forgotten that because i was just overawed by the occasion and ms is a master at it tendulkar makes his debut in 89 by 2004 when ms bursts on the national scene as a player as a young player from a small town in india tendulkar has already played that 98 against pakistan how is the relationship between this master has he completely abdicated and said my focus is here or is he backing the young in a sense young captain for tendulkar everybody is young and saying can i fulfill my ambition through you look ms as a person never stopped anybody from saying anything he welcomed anybody saying anything whether would he would he be doing it that's that's a different debate different task he would allow and promote conversations from every nook and corner of the dressing room but when he wanted to do something i always thought it was his own decision mm. and like i said he inside his head like a computer knew everybody inside that squad completely well knew their strengths and always put them in a situation where they would succeed yeah he a sign of a leader is to always promote the others to in a situation where they could succeed and i think he was a master yeah and the, and the interesting thing about 2011 was you look at ms he turns up and says i think i need to bat at 5 I was watching that game. I said, "Is he batting five because UV might struggle against Murli? Is he batting five because he's seen a lot of Murli was CSK player at that time? Did he just think this is the moment? Sometimes we all think this is this is the moment. This this is a problem, right? Most of us think like this. We we think about so many scenarios. UV has been the player of the tournament. Can I go ahead of him? That's a negative thought. Well, apparently he he goes to Gary Kirsten and says, "I think I should bat." And Gary says, "Yeah, I was waiting." For I, you to say I that. was sitting right outside, yeah. and I can't remember or recollect a conversation. It could have happened. I'm not I'm not privy yeah. to it. 
but there are several ways you can think the situation out, okay? Yuvraj Singh has been the player of the tournament, so should I go ahead of him? Question mark. Okay, if I go and fail, what will the people say is another question mark. If Yuvi goes and wins this game, we are hands down, we are winning the game. So why should I go? There are so many question marks. But knowing MS, I know exactly how you would have thought. I can smash Murali, I am going. That's it. So when you are I'm appending a question mark mm. with a positive answer, the outcome is what it would be. And I think he was supremely confident of facing and fronting up Murali. And he also knew, I think cricket is a lot less about skill and a lot about man-to-man -man battle. And I think Murali knew MS had him. When yeah. you're talking about Dhoni's men, yeah. there is a problem, right? We all run the risk of talking only about Dhoni and forgetting the yes. rest of the superstars. Absolutely. <laughs> we just briefly touched upon Gautam Gambhir, but where's the other guy? We briefly touched upon Yuvraj Singh. The man, he's won World Cups for us, 2007 and yes. 2011. Uh, spare a thought for him. What, what do you think, Harsha? The man's gone through lots of ups and downs. Where do you see that? I just wonder if Yuvraj is sitting today thinking, you know what, I've had one of the most celebrated white ball careers the world has seen, let alone India has seen. Player of the tournament at two major tournaments and whatever. Or does he think I could have done more? That maybe I batted too far down, should I have batted three, four, a, a little bit more? But, but in that tournament, for all the greatness of Yuvraj as a batter, I mean, on a good batting deck, when Yuvraj came into bat, you stopped what you were doing and you just wished you could see that bat flow through, like Stuart Broad saw. I mean, every ball there was almost as if, if you see the six sixes, it's almost as if Yuvraj has said, I, I want the ball there. Harsha, that shot over cover was a phenomenal shot. It was though. something else. My only concern with that is all the good moments went to Ravi Shastri in the commentary box. <laughs> I, was, I was behind. He, I was standing he, behind he while called, that was happening. He called the exuberance of youth the when correct. the dancing started. I was standing behind. I said, Ravi, give me one moment. <laughs> You're getting all of the big moments. But Ravi had the voice and the thing to carry off those moments. So I didn't mind very much. I thought you, Yuvraj, the bowler, made the whole difference whole difference to the side. And that is why I look at so many young players. I said, look at Yuvraj Singh. He contributed three ways. If you want to win a World Cup, you must have players or you want to have a great career, you must contribute three ways to your side. Today, being a fielder is a given. If there's a 20-year-old kid today who's slow in the field, sorry, you've not been watching the game. You have a primary skill, but you must have a third Secondary. skill. You have to have a third skill. And people like Yuvraj, Raina, all these people showed you the importance of that third skill. There is a fourth skill, Harsha, very less talked about. Standing up under severe duress and pressure. Yeah. Which is what UV did in that quarter-final game against Australia. He came on to bowl, yeah. picked up wickets. All right? He came on to bat, Gautam Gambhir got run out. One of the best players of spin in India, Jason Kreza on a wicket that was spinning a bit, holding a bit, was operating reasonably well. Sean Tate was bowling quick. Yuvraj walked in and owned that stage. It is no mean achievement. I think Dhoni walked in and got caught at point as well. Awesome. And I remember Sachin Pachi coming up to me. I was padded up and I, I had made a 35-40 odd against Australia in the practice game at, uh, at Chinnaswamy before the World Cup. I remember that game because that was one of my best knocks until then. Yeah. So Pachi walked up to me and said, UV will get this done. UV will be there. And I know you will be with him and see us through. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yes, Pachi, sure. And Pachi was like, I saw you the way you batted against Mitchell Johnson and all that in the practice game. This is easy peasy for you. It's a walk in the park. Just stay with UV. And it told me two, two things. The belief he had on UV and his elephant-sized memory of remembering my practice game innings yeah. in, a, in, a, in, in, know, in the start in, of the tournament. In every team, there are leaders. But there's also, you may not be the designated leader in a team, but you are in effect the leader. But I thought Tendulkar was that person where he was not the designated leader, but he was there for everybody. And he was leading without a title. Tell me, I want to ask you about one other player. I look at the 2011 World Cup, Zach got his glory, the odd, odd moments, Rishan did a little bit something somewhere, everybody did. The one player we never talk about, but he always seemed to be bowling those middle of the Munaf Patel. Yeah, 10 actually, overs 40, 10 overs 42, 10 overs The ball to Abdul Razak in the semi-final. Yeah. The leg cutter, an absolute beauty. I, I, everybody has to play a role, Harsha. In a World Cup triumph, there is one thing I can be certain about. Your time will come. Are you ready to take your time with both hands? Yeah. Your opportunity will come. Are you ready? So was with Ashish Nehra. He, he played a yes. very crucial role, then fractured. You know, he fractured his hand before the final. Very unfortunate. Zach had a great, Zach had a great World Cup. He was, the, he was probably the first bowler who bowled a knuckleball. Yes. And he had developed that before the World Cup. Uh, we were playing that game uh, in Bangalore at China, uh, against England. 
and England was bossing that game. In came Zach, reverse swing, Andrew Stross, LBW on 100 odd something, big 100. Paul Collingwood caught out, I mean, bowled out, bowling a knuckleball. Ian Bell, knuckleball again, skied up for a catch. Z when you wanted something, semi uh, quarter final, Michael Hussey came in, knuckleball, bowled. He, he was just in a different league at that point of time. I think MS also and, the, and India as a country was extremely lucky to have Zach and Sachin at the peak of their prowess at that in, point. In 20, 2011 was a dream that was crafted and it was just something that was, that was meant to be. I also hope all of you watching this realized how seamlessly the anchor and the summarizer changed roles in, in, tw <laughs> in 2011. But that is how it was going to be. I was sitting in a studio, uh, hosting every single match and just and, and watching. But I was watching on a box. And I was watching on a 30-inch, 32-inch, yeah. whatever, whatever screen. Occasionally, we would see it on the big screen. But as, as the moment drew closer, and we were all getting ready in the studio, as the moment drew closer, I still remember when Dhoni hit that six, it was like, Something wow. else. And experiencing a feeling of great depression afterwards, because everybody was celebrating. I finished my program. I went back to my hotel room. I could see crackers from my hotel room. And I desperately wanted to share that moment with somebody and I was alone in my hotel room. And the greatest moment gave me the greatest, a great dose of depression afterwards. But it was, it, it was, as you said, it brought joy to India. We need to move on to culture. What is one thing that you remember that changed India's cricketing culture post this 2011 triumph? Uh, the, the belief that on the biggest stage you can, it was to be the start of a little bit of churn in test match cricket afterwards. But the belief that you can, and it was a set of fearless people. One thing that I do remember was the handing over of the baton almost from oh, yeah. a Tendulkar to a Kohli and the arrival of somebody who for all that you know might be equally gifted, but the arrival of somebody who showed it was a different India. And Frontal India. Yes. And you could see that. To some extent, it was there with Yuvraj and the others too. But here was someone who was in your face best symbolized by him saying, let's give them 60 overs of hell in, in the test match. At Lords. At Lords. Let's give them 60 overs of hell and getting the entire team to actually deliver that many overs of, of hell. So I thought the, the passing of the baton, to, to me that was the start of a new uh, new era in our cricket. Like you said, when, there's, when they're going to pull the plug on me, the last memory would be our procession back from uh, Vankade Stadium to Taj, where we were staying. And like Tony Gregg would say, Every Mercedes Benz and every BMW, people were dancing on dancing on the aisles on top of each of those cars, and it, that memory yeah. will always stick. It, it meant it meant a lot. I yes. often said when that's Tendulkar, why I said it's a yeah. win for the common man. It was. Where I often said when Tendulkar was at his peak, I said when Tendulkar played well, India slept well, because Tendulkar allowed you to forget the day-to-day -day things and revel in Tendulkar's glory. This World Cup win allowed India to revel in a glory, and say. Yes, man, we can. And it was it was just meant to be. It had to be in Mumbai. It had to be in Tendulkar's home ground. It had to be in India, the 2011 World Cup. It was, it'll, it'll remain special in many ways. I'm trying to think 83 or 2011. 83, because of the sheer impossibility of what eventually transpired. In 2011, India were among the favorites. But in 83, so I'm trying to think 83 or 11, 83 or 11. I think as a mass movement, what it meant to India, 2011. But for the sheer miracle, 83. 83. Right. And that's the hope we will be heading into for 2023 when India fronts yes. up again for another home World Cup. Obviously, the baton has shifted. We will look at the baton shift and also look slightly into the 2023 World Cup on the next episode. Until then, thanks for joining us on this episode of Kuti Stories with Ash, brought to you by BKT Tires. India lifts the World Cup after 28 years. Party starts in the dressing room.